so hi everyone i'm uh, super excited to be presenting at my third in person communities on next day uh, and of course unfortunately my co speaker is not able to make it but i have a virtual portion of uh, his part of the talk uh, so today's talk is all about orchestrating machine learning on edge devices with acri and webassembly so of course we know that we are in an era where we are having a bunch of different type of edge devices primarily a lot of like cameras sensors and the primary biggest issue when kind of dealing with these kind of devices is that we cannot really run kubernetes on these devices so we'll be looking at how you can leverage an open source project called project takri and actually run these or essentially be able to utilize these edge devices on a standard kubernetes cluster and how you can efficiently do more in compute intensive tasks like machine learning with the help of webassembly on edge so a quick introduction i'm shivai i'm a De devrel engineer at milsearch and also was a ambassador and my co speaker ashit is a student at university of toronto so i'll first like to start by giving an introduction to webassembly now i think i myself have given a couple of webassembly related talks at communities on edge if you haven't watched them you can probably look at some of the previous years of uh, the communities on edge and you'll be able to take a look at how you primarily manage like running kubernetes on edge with the help of webassembly but primarily the goal over, over here like i'll just give a quick gist of what webassembly is but i'll not be uh, taking a lot of time in explaining this but at the bare minimum the webassembly is essentially this binary string format uh, for a virtual machine so essentially you take languages or you take programs or functions written in multiple programming languages and you are able to convert them into what again so what i'm sharing is that uh, we are going to be basically talking about webassembly and it is primarily a binary restriction format and it is designed as a compilation target so what does it mean that you can basically take uh, functions written in multiple programming languages like c c++ python so you don't really care about whether it's a systems language or even a object oriented programming language you can take functions or modules written in these languages and compile it down into this binary structure format and it can actually run across a host of different devices so whether it's starting off with it sort of as a browser technology but we've very uh, quickly realized that it can actually be run very efficiently on edge devices on server side as well so you're seeing a lot of like cloud native webassembly these days running on serverless functions on kubernetes on edge as well and the biggest benefit the reason why you know it's uh, it is the way it is is that the overall size of these webassembly binaries is pretty small so it's compared to your standard containers which can be a few megabytes to even like hundreds of megabytes in size typically these webassembly containers or these modules are 100 or 1000 the size of your typical uh, containers and of course uh, since it is a very low level bytecode the performance that you get is fairly near to what you'll get with a standard uh, you know uh, like a standard native binary that you might be generating with rust or with c++ so a you get the portability of being able to use it on multiple different type of devices so the webassembly module itself does not care on what particular type of device architecture you run it on and we know that in edge architectures whether you talk about risk 5 or x64 x86 uh, all of these different architectures are very distinct from each other so we uh, webassembly provides you a way of being able to just have the single target and then deploy it across on different types of device architectures without having to worry too much about the architecture itself um and of course uh, the webassembly module itself cannot really do anything on its own so over here this is a very famous diagram by lin clark um so essentially what we are trying to say is that uh, similar to how the kernel kind of manages to make uh, system calls uh, for like let's say your applications to be able to refer to your memory or to your storage uh, how the kernel is making the sys calls similarly uh, in webassembly we have this concept of the webassembly system interface which allows you to make web webassembly system calls to your file resources because the way that webassembly works is that it's kind of enclosed in this uh, sandbox model this it's a basically a security feature that essentially does not allow your webassembly module to directly interact with file resources or even make networking calls in order to make that happen we need to make the uh, we have to use the webassembly system interface and this uses the wasi sys calls in order to interact with the external file resources or uh, you know the networking as well 
And of course, um, I've kind of touched upon this uh, briefly, but we know that edge is pretty complicated, right? Um, I think like the biggest issue is the lack of uh, compute. Then of course, uh, heterogeneous architecture, because every different type of device ar architecture that we commonly look at is distinct from your regular types. Um, and then of course, that means that if you're having a system where you're dealing with different type of device architectures, you'll probably have to maintain uh, different binaries or uh, different scripts to be able to uh, run your uh, code or whatever you're trying to, like whatever workload you're trying to run on these distinct devices. And that can basically lead up to additional costs as well. Uh, and that is the reason why you should basically use WebAssembly for the edge. Uh, I, I think I've already mentioned about how it is actually a lot smaller in size in comparison to containers. It's also a lot faster. So you must be aware of the boot up time or the cold start time when it actually takes to start running any edge device uh, or any container that you're running on the edge. Uh, so containers typically have a startup boot time of any, typically from like a few microseconds to a few seconds. And again, in comparison to your main containers, the startup time uh, or the boot time for the cold start time for WebAssembly is a lot shorter in size, uh, in, in time. Uh, so, of course, these are some of the main reasons why you should consider running WebAssembly on the edge in comparison to containers. But that doesn't mean that WebAssembly completely uh, replaces containers. Uh, just, uh, you know, just a, a point to note over here, because of course, uh, a lot of containers are very mature at this point in time, and WebAssembly still, especially on the edge, is still growing. So a lot of your typical, um, you know, networking calls or for example like networking right now in WebAssembly is not that optimized or that well built in comparison to containers. So the idea is to basically run them together but here are some of the reasons why you should consider at least. Um, and of course now I'd like to quickly introduce the project Takri. So I think like the biggest issue then when we kind of find with edge devices or especially with devices which have very less compute is that they are not capable of running Kubernetes. We know that Kubernetes requires a lot of resources. Uh, so they are simply not good enough to run Kubernetes. But imagine if you were able to basically treat these edge devices as Kubernetes resources and just run workloads on top of these devices and not having to directly run Kubernetes itself on these. And that is what Akri essentially allows to do. So it will basically detect uh, these edge nodes or these leaf devices, and these devices can be anything. They, they could be cameras deployed on the edge, it could be uh, any sensors, right? And so essentially Akri will allow you to detect these uh, modules or these edge devices, and then treat them as standard Kubernetes resources and run them similar to how you would basically run any standard communities uh, and be able to schedule jobs or run or schedule pods on these devices. So here's a quick look at the architecture. So what you'll see initially is that we have like the standard communities control plane that you'll normally see. Now, what you'll see is over here, uh, we have the leaf devices. So you see like all the different type of categories of devices, so cameras, sensors. Now, what we have really is, uh, of course, we have the main communities control plane. But alongside that, we also have something uh, which is primarily dedicated towards uh, the Acri, which is the Acri controller that you see in the previous slide. And also the main things which are Acri agent, the custom broker and the product and the discovery handler. So we'll basically talk about each of these particular things one by one. So the custom broker is what uh, basically deals with this discovery handler. So this discovery hand handler is essentially what is continuously trying to detect edge or leaf devices. And as soon as it is able to detect a new device in, in its vicinity, uh, the custom broker will basically uh, detect that particular device and treat it as a Kubernetes resource. And the Acre agent will uh, be able to then schedule jobs and run pods on these edge devices, right? Uh, so essentially what your Kubernetes cluster is now doing is it, it's becoming a lot more efficient and you're actually able to make use of these custom resources um, and these edge devices and then use them as your custom resources inside of your cluster. Uh, so I think like it makes it a lot easier to work with edge devices and this is a very efficient way of being able to leverage more and more devices inside of your cluster. So that is uh, a basic idea about how we are essentially being able to orchestrate a host of these different network or these edge devices with the help of Acri. 
Now, of course, um, the biggest question arises, why use WebAssembly with Arcade? Because today's talk is all about how you orchestrate these edge devices and run huge workloads uh, with WebAssembly and Arcade. So, of course, Arcade is a great way for you be able to be able to detect these devices and then run Kubernetes on top of it, right? Jobs. But now, of course, the question arises, how can we efficiently run uh, these jobs? If you were to try to run containers, it would be very s slow because, again, these devices have very less compute. So that is where WebAssembly, as I kind of introduced before, uh, and how WebAssembly on the edge is efficient comes in the picture. And we are kind of like marrying, ma marrying them together, right? Um, so you're essentially running these WebAssembly workloads inside of your Kubernetes pods. And because these WebAssembly workloads are a lot more smaller in size, um, and of course, you also get a lot of safety. Because like, let's say if you're running a very, uh, you know, privacy-focused uh, workload, like let's say you're running some machine learning workload on the edge that you don't want uh, to send on a server, uh, you want to run it locally and in a safe environment, so the WebAssembly sandbox, security sandbox model will make your workload secure. Uh, because the WebAssembly model itself is pretty small, so the workload will be a lot more efficient. And of course, you will be able to just distribute it across a whole load of different type of devices without having to worry about the device-specific architecture in mind. So these are some of the main reasons why you should use uh, Wasm with Acre. And of course, what can we do? So let's take a look at an example. Uh, so of course, here is my standard cluster, uh, pretty much the same architecture diagram that I showed to you. So instead of our user node, um, we of course are the Arcade device handler will detect your edge devices. So here I've just taken an example of a camera which could be detected as in one of the edge devices. Now we'll basically, uh, as I kind of mentioned, that instead of running your standard containers, we are running our WebAssembly workload, right, on these nodes. So essentially once our Arcade discovery handler will detect this particular device, then our Arcade agent will uh, run the workload and in this case we are basically running a WebAssembly workload. So the shim that you see is the WebAssembly uh, shim. So in similar to how you have standard container D shims, we have the WebAssembly wasm shim that is running inside of your kubelet and this kubelet is what is essentially running on top of your device. So uh, this, is, this is basically the example of what our architecture would look like. But now my co-speaker, I'll present the video so that he can uh, give you more details about our demo setup where we are running machine learning workloads on edge devices uh, with the help of Acre and WebAssembly. I think it's the maximum volume. Um. I think the volume might be a bit less. Let me just try to see if I'm able to run it from my laptop. Let me see. Look, can we take a look at more windows and Set up for this talk, uh, what would be showing to demonstrate uh, how you could use Wazir, Acre, and Kubernetes uh, to, to, not only, uh, uh, to not only run edge workloads or embedded workloads, but also manage these workloads and, uh, or, and do some kind of orchestration on the edge uh, with Acre and Kubernetes. So, to take a look at that, what we'll be doing is uh, We'll quickly be taking a look at mobile nerves, and uh, mobile nerves are, uh, are are a popular are a popular is a popular model for a very popular machine learning problem called novel view synthesis, where you have a few images and you want to reconstruct a 3D uh, and, and you want to reconstruct the 3D geometry of the object. So, uh, so, so mobile nerves are a very popular model. Uh, is a very popular model that. Uh, allows you to do this a bit more quickly on the edge and uh, we we'll ask the question can we make it faster uh, if, or can we make it pretty fast still getting the still getting the benefits of WebAssembly and uh, and also getting the benefits of using Acre and Kubernetes uh, to orchestrate uh, to orchestrate this app. So that's what we'll be taking a look at and that's our setup uh, well our rough setup. So first, let's take a look at uh, 
what we are going to do optimize our Gaussian binaries. So, so one of the most popular things you can do and something that might have crossed your mind uh, on optimizing it for edge is ahead of time compilation. And uh, this is pretty popular, uh, uh, however, in this scan limit, uh, uh, however, you could use the portability aspect of the assembly uh, if you do ahead of time compilation. Uh, this will then be restricted to uh, a particular device or an architecture. Uh, so, so, so you do use the portability aspect of WebAssembly uh, with a head of time compilation. Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, however, uh, I will do a head of time compilation, and uh, I and I, I, and I make it work for a particular architecture uh, with a head of time compilation. And I particularly see that, uh, as expected, a head of time compilation most certainly. Uh, makes our binaries a lot more faster. So rendering the neural field uh, becomes quite a bit faster. And if you see in general for machine learning problems, uh, like mobile net for example, uh, it becomes 40 percent faster with the head of time compilation. And, uh, and, and you get really small artifacts down to 3.3 MBs uh, with mobile net. So usually for a lot of machine learning problems, which is uh, the idea for this talk, uh, ahead of time compilation is often a pretty nice size uh, if, if you are okay sacrificing the portability aspect. And if you also see uh, ahead of time compilation, it, it's also pretty fast than something like wasm time or Node.js wasm runtime. Uh, so, so, um, uh, so as expected, ahead of time compilation does make our things pretty fast. Another thing specific to um, a specific to such machine learning problems is doing some kind of initialization or warm up. So this could be uh, initializing your, uh, so this could be warming up your uh, warming up your for model forward pause such that uh, such that you just go through it with some dummy tensor or or, or just make sure that. Uh, the raw parts of your uh, model are well warmed up. So, uh, so this particular uh, uh, thing also gets us uh, gets us a bit of speed boost uh, for our nerves. Uh, this particular you doesn't uh, you don't see a lot of difference on nerve based models because you still need to you still need to train by doing the inference uh, with all of these nerve based models. Uh, but, but for any uh, for any of these other kinds of models, uh, for example, mobile net, you you'd often see a big um, a big speed up with just one of your wasm binaries. So so yeah, for a mobile net model, you, you see it being one thirty two percent faster just warming up your wasm binaries. And in general, this is true for a lot of machine learning problems. Uh, for nerve based models, uh, as I was just saying. Um, this doesn't help too much because we still need to do training. Uh, a popular thing, uh, a, a popular uh, idea with uh, uh, Wasm is to use it as uh, this on this representation of a serializable IR such that you can do uh, compiler optimizations pretty easily. So you can also do link time optimizations with WebAssembly and uh, uh, and, and this also gets us, uh, and this also gets us of, uh, uh, a small speed boost uh, of, of for our uh, for our under uh, binary. Uh, and there are also quite a bit of other optimizations you can make, uh, especially with Gaussian binary running on the edge. Uh, and we don't talk about all of them; with, we just talk about the way. Uh, about some of the popular ones and how you think about doing this. So, I most certainly uh, uh, suggest checking out Binarian IR and uh, also doing some more intrusive stuff uh, you could do for these kind of optimizations. 
basically these are all the different type of optimizations that you're seeing directly happening with the WebAssembly binary itself. Uh, so as you saw that our use case is primarily uh, running this Nerf model. So Nerf is a very popular machine learning model uh, which allows you to create 3D rendered objects by giving it a prompt. Um, so what I'll be quickly now showing you is a demo of how that basically is set up. So in this case, we are using an Azure uh, K3S uh, cluster and setting up Acre discovery handler to be able to detect a device and then actually run our mo machine learning model inference on top of it by, of course, making certain optimizations uh, to the actual WebAssembly model itself. So I'll just quickly highlight uh, that demonstration. That's just an option. But we'll take a look at is uh, first making uh, set up for this. So now, what we'll take a look at is first, uh, is first making Kubernetes cluster with some of the nodes uh, with Wasm plus Wasi in it. So, so that's what we'll do first, and I'll just uh, make this. Um, I'll just make this Kubernetes cluster set up. And I guess, and what I'll just do is add a node to um, it wasn't this was each, so, so there will be like, uh, there are like three nodes in this, and all of those are equipped to run wasn't this was uh, on them. So that's what I'll do this. Okay, so now that I have that uh, created, I can just see that uh, I have like these agents and uh, was Next up, what I'll do is uh, I can I can very simply uh, just st uh, just start deploying Acre, and uh, what I'll do for that is uh, first just uh, set uh, set the Kubernetes distro. So let me do that. And uh, right now in this example, I use K3s uh, run, run well on the edge, and uh, and then I can just uh, in install the Acre components which we talked about. Uh, so let's do that. And uh, right now I already have those components deployed, so I can just do kubectl get pods. And we can actually see all the uh, we can uh, see the Acre agents, the Acre control, uh, which we talked about. So so let's actually see uh, the controller, and and we have like this controller deployment. Uh, oh yeah. So next up, what we can do is uh, take a look at the agent deployments. So we also have the Acne agents, uh, which we talked about. And, uh, you can also use this tool called Wasm to CI. Uh, uh, and, and this is also what we'll be using to uh, which is also what we'll be using to convert our purposefully binaries to uh, OCI compliant container images, and, uh, and and we and we can also use it. So um, just to quickly showcase um, what the end result was, uh, our discovery handler, which you can see the source code right now, was able to basically, uh, this is what will help us to detect the devices. And we're kind of simulating that and running the actual uh, machine learning code. And this is basically the 3D rendered uh, example of what we are able to generate with the Nerf model. And these were running on an edge device. So for us, we simulated a mobile phone as the edge device and ran this on an Android phone. Uh, which was able to get detected from our machine learning cluster, uh, from our, uh, you know, Acre cluster was able to be di discovered by the discovery handler and uh, run it across our Kubernetes cluster, that is our K K3S cluster. So this is a quick demonstration of what uh, are the steps mainly, but of course we would love to connect with you if you are interested to learn more about the demo. Uh, but of course, um, the main best practices when it comes to deploying Acre is uh, that A, that uh, because we are able to discover these uh, devices, uh, so you can basically just ensure that you're making configurations for uh, being able to do dynamic resource allocation so that you can uh, individually detect these uh, devices um, and just have a clear discovery uh, strategy for that. But with that, I'll uh, conclude my talk. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and of course, I'll be more than happy to
uh, connect with all of you. Uh, you can uh, connect with me on Twitter, at the and I'll be around over here if you want to kind of discover and let's have more conversations about how we approach this entire solution. Thank you. Thank you.